Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today we are with uh, Roshan Healy, Maggie Doyle and Derek Smith. Uh, thanks for coming on guys. So basically, uh, Maggie, you're playing for a P-mount yeah. in the Women's National League. How's that going for you? Oh, it's a great, very great club to be part of and to be playing in the highest league is just a great achievement. Okay, and Roshan, uh, you're playing for uh, Dundrum. Dundrum, yeah. And uh, is Derek your coach, yeah? Yeah. How's that going for you? How's he? Oh, oh, Maggie's your coach as well. Derek's the manager. Yeah. How's that going for you? Yeah, it's great. I love it. I love having a laugh with these two. Not too stern on you, I think. I can't see Derek being too stern on anything. Um, so, obviously, you're coaching and you're playing and coaching and you're playing. Since you all started playing and coaching football and women's football in particular, how much do you think the standard of coaching and playing has improved in Ireland as a whole and, you know, in the local areas? Uh? It's definitely evolved, like, since I was I started playing, like, I had to play with the boys growing up. There wasn't many girls' teams out there. And just now, like, the quality of young girls coming up and, like, the development officers around the area, like, Thomas Morgan and Rory O'Hare, just... Put so much work into the women's game, like and like with league centre that's after starting up like emerging talent over this side now and you just see like from the local clubs around this area just the quality of young girls coming up on playing is just unreal. So I think in the next ten years like we'd be one of the top nations with girls football definitely. Yeah. Eric, how do you feel college was? <clears throat> For me anyway, I only got involved with uh, the female side of the game. Four years ago, never even seen a women's match or a girls' match. The only time I ever seen girls playing was um, at an rights level when they were with Mikey Town and girls played on boys' teams. Yeah. <coughs> um, but since I've come in, like not just the like, the standard, the standard has raised an awful lot since I started anyway. But also the attitude towards the world has changed. People are now starting to take it more serious and. It's, it's becoming more accepted than what I yeah. found it was when I first started coaching um, the female side of the game. But like you said, I think in the next few years, <clears throat> the way things are going with the coaches that are, are uh, doing what they do at grassroots level, I think in the next couple of years, we will be one of the top nations as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I just come back from Canada, obviously, and when I was over there coaching and stuff like that, like, girls' football over there is absolutely huge. Like, you're, it's, the se it's the second highest sport played over there. If we could replicate anything like that coming over and obviously raise a bit of awareness to get more, um, even more uh, closure for the club, for Irish uh, women's and uh, teams, even the, even the national team, get more people to games and stuff like that. How would you suggest maybe get more people to games and make more people aware of the games and stuff like that? I think, I think there needs to be more, um, more PR put out about it. You don't see, like, when, when the men's team, any men's team, are playing. <clears throat> it's advertised everywhere. League of Ireland, the Ireland team, over in England, Spanish League, German League, all that sort of stuff. It's everywhere all over this country. And women's football here isn't advertised as much. Um, the odd time you'd see on Facebook about the women's, uh, the national team playing, but it's very, very rare that it's, it's advertised, even on TV. Yeah. You'd never see it on TV or anything like that. So I think advertisement, I think there needs to be a big push in the advertisement uh, side of things. Um. Then we we'll go on the obviously we're talking about progress in women's football has made in the country in the last few years, but um, at the national team level, the women's or the women's team came out earlier in the year, kind of had a press conference and everything, and basically were going on strike um, because of the way they were being treated by the FAI. Did that just highlight for yourselves, obviously being involved in the women's side of things, how different men's teams are treated to women's teams from the top all the way down? Yeah, for me it was serious pain in the neck because I'm <coughs> involved in both sides. I come to man in the men's team as well, and for me everybody is equal. And regardless of whether it's at the highest level or the lowest level, I think everybody should be treated the exact same. And whether that's transport to a game, whether it's a track suit, whether it's another football to get, whether it's support on the line, whatever it is, I think everybody should be treated the same. And I think when the women's, when the national, the women's national team went on street or held that press conference, 
for me, it showed an awful lot more than what I thought was actually wrong with the game. But the biggest thing for me was the tracksuits. Yeah. Like it's so so. Like, it was unbelievable because for me, <clears throat> at this level, we have our our team have our own tracksuits. Yeah. We don't make our players train in, in our change in in change rooms. We don't give them tracksuits on, on match day or stuff like that. Or when we're going to a, a game far away, we give them tracksuits when when they sign up and stuff, and we get sponsorship. But for a woman to be playing for the top team in the country and represent their country in any given sport or whatever it is, yeah. the least you should be given is what you what I call a uniform. Yeah. It should be given to you, irregardless. Especially for representing the country. Exactly. Like that that's just what got to me. Because we're at the grass we're we're at the bottom of the tree at the moment and at the top of the tree they're not even getting a traction. Yeah. I mean that's just mm-hmm. and then there was the stuff about um the women Taking days off work and not getting paid for stuff like that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous in my The lack of appearance, like the lack of appearance fees, they were getting the fees for actually going to the games. They were getting yeah. less than they'd be paid to do a minimum wage job and work exactly. like for the day. For me, that it all comes down to respect. Yeah, that's that's just what I thought. What I came, I took from it anyway it was respect from the FEI. It was dreadful. I just like it blows me. It seems to have improved, like on Instagram, we see yeah, Stephanie Roach is always having takeovers of the Instagram stories and stuff yeah. like that. There definitely is a lot more, she's promoting her a lot more, obviously, herself, because of her and the Puskas Award and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, she seems to be pushing that as much as she can. But, for example, so you're playing for PM out there at the top level. How, like, attendance-wise, how, how would you just be doing attendance-wise, even coming and watching your games? There wouldn't be, like, that, like, there wouldn't be loads... Like, there, there could be, like, the, the league is gone now four years, the Women's National League, it's been four or five years, it's it's gone. Like, but I do think it's getting better. It's a slow process, like, there, there, you're always going to find problems and things wrong with the game. But overall, like, as a whole, I think that the, the women's game is progressing and there is people out there that are really trying to help the women's game. And, like, I can just see, like, with the girls coming through on my team, like, 16-year-olds and stuff, one of the girls off my team is after getting called up to see her international and she's just unreal, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And there, there is people coming to watch the matches and it's the times of the matches, like, your matches are played on a Saturday night, you know what I mean? Yeah. Young people are not going to come out on a Saturday night at 7 o'clock and yeah. watch, but we do get we do get good numbers, like, there is a buzz about the league and there is a buzz about our team at the minute, so people are... Actually, really, drink <laughs> people, <laughs> people are really coming out, like, to watch yeah. us because there, there's a buzz around the team, there's a buzz around the league, yeah. and we're lucky with the people that we have in the club and how they push <laughs> the games and how they promote promote our games like I think if you do have that in place and you have that good structure that'll just come back tenfold on on the team, you know? Yeah. Okay, and as far as your uh, your team itself Roshin, um uh, how how many people would you have coming down to watch your games? Oh, I have all the locals down all the time, like it's Monday afternoon or whatever when we play and what else does people have to do? Roshan's Rosh. like, family comes down to <laughs> So that's about fifteen or so <laughs> And um, then, obviously, Mike, you're playing the Women's National League already, and Roshan, you're playing here at Dundrum. Um, does, can you see Maggie playing her coach in you, and the fact that there is now a proper National League within the country that players can go and play for, and it's a more professional setup, and it's an avenue to play for the national team, does that give someone like you playing at this level motivation to kind of push further that there is that next step over here that you can move up to? Oh, yeah, well, like... I've always looked up to, up to Maggie because, like, when I first started playing, I came down to Leicester or whatever, and uh, she was there. Like, she always encouraged you to do your best as you can, even if you're losing. Just go out with respect. Like, you yeah. want to be proud and that you played the game and that that you're there. Like, you're putting in the effort 110% all the time. But, <clears throat> like, as my youth family here gone over to America, like, <clears throat> for a couple of months or whatever, like I think that's amazing. Yeah. And yeah. It's a problem, Corey. Tell us a bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, go on. I I only really started taking football to like more so. I played since I'm six, like with the boys, as I said, like and I fell out of love with the game and just 
and I'm up and putting loads away, so I wasn't really enjoying football. So I needed to do something, I needed to get back into it. Can I only apologise for the rain, guys? Yeah. Sorry, go on. <laughs> so um, yeah, I did do, there's a FOSS, FAI FOSS uh, programme, that, like your, your full time training. Yeah. And like, it was fun that like the, the guy that runs the Hardy Kenny, like, always pushed me. Like, I've always had the people. Manager, yeah, yeah. I've always had people that have pushed me, like, and that's what like I try and do now, like with, with coaching, like because I've always had good coaches and people pushing me, and that's what Harry pushed me, and it was only because of him, like that I got the scholarship over to America. I own, I and I was all, I was an older person going over, like and that, that's very rare because the only one people that are eating. And so I went over and I played for five months in uh, Monroe Community College in New York. And it's huge over there, so it's not like it's just not. Oh, it was, like we got to be one of our region, our district, and we got to the semi final and national tournament in Florida. Like, it was just the whole experience of it. Like, there were so many highs and there were so many lows, and it was just yeah. the, the way the Americans are, like, and different. It was just an amazing experience. Like, I recommend it to anyone. Like, and I, like, Roisin is one of our main players. Like, I've known Roisin since she's 14, but she started playing with Leicester. Like, I'm just seeing her evolve and grow as a player, like as a, yeah. as an athlete, as as a leader. She's a proper like leader, and anything I can do to help Roisin progress in football, I will. Like, because yeah. I really think that she's one of the best players like that we have definitely in the world. Like, yeah. and I can't see her going on further than ourselves in football. And uh, like football is always open doors for me. Like, so I'd hope that it opens doors for people that are coming through the team so I'm coaching with Derek like do you know what I mean and yeah. AJ yeah. so I'll move on to the last kind of serious question for you um, just <laughs> obviously a couple of different teams you're all coaching and playing for the same team and then you're playing for PMLT as well how have your season has your season gone so far uh, we bought this shirt on the PMLT so we put it yeah. well I'll get on to Vinnie Parsons look at that lovely socks this is the first guys on the couch as well yeah <laughs> A lovely new couch. Come on, here. Um, yeah, the season so far, we've played two games in the league. Um, we won one last one. Yeah. We won one last one. Um, we beat League Slip in our first game. Uh, pretty much their first team that we played. Um, when we should have been playing their second team, we played their first team and beat them. And then we played St. Columbans away and they beat us 2-0. Um, they played with six at the back. No formation. Never seen a form in the league. But, uh, That's it, Charles and Mourinho, you know your formation. That's right, it was really good. They literally parked the bus, but <clears throat> it worked for them. They got the three points and fair play to them. So we uh, we are looking, though, you know, we have a strong squad and we are looking to push it and really go on and win that league again this year. We won the league last year as well, so we moved up two leagues this year. Um, but the squad that we have, we're looking to. Progression has been great. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm only with this team. Yeah, like, <laughs> I was trying to knock a few players to come up. <laughs> no, like, the progression has been unreal. Like, yeah. I've only been with the team two, year, two, two and a half years, is it? And De Derek had them at under 18s and was working real hard with them. And he did really well. They finished tour and they got to the final of the league, didn't they? Yeah. Then they jumped down from under 18s down to senior football. That's when I came in to help. And like we played in the winter, <laughs> we were playing in like against teams that had been together like for over ten years, and yeah. we were like, oh no, and we we were losing players because they were getting disheartened. Weren't we? Did we win any? Any? Sorry, did we win any of the games? No. <laughs> But then what happened then when we when we went into the proper league then in the summer then how like how do you think oh we, we were a better team because like we had that experience during the winter and all that stuff and then it kind of we kind of grew together we knew like what like everyone was able to do and we helped each other out but then last last season winning it like we were winning nearly every match and come like going up two leagues or whatever now you notice yeah. the difference like you notice yeah. how how much you have to push yourself. Like, they haven't been as easy as last last year, but... And getting back, like, as well, like, like that first year, like, we were, we were scra like, you know, get, uh, scraping things together, like, and, like, jerseys and stuff like that. And then we, we did that Winter League, and then we went straight into, straight from that into the Summer League, and we were in the right division. 
and then Tyler's Tree Rock Johnny up there, like so su- the support he's given us like has been unreal. And then we won the league and the team just came together and this year we've added new players. We've a squad of twenty like and like we're we're doing really well and we're coming along like we won our first match, lost our second match, but really think we can push on now and win this league as well again, like definitely. 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 Right, we'll move on then to some easier questions. Um, I'll start. We'll go across there, across the road, and then back across. Um, favorite player, male or female? Favorite player, male or female? Um, probably be Katie McCabe for the, for the national team. Yeah, and Arsenal. So. I think her energy, her enthusiasm, the flair she has. She just, for me, she plays the game the way I like. Well, she did that in her brother. She's definitely better than her brother. Yeah. <laughs> definitely better than her brother. Katie McCabe is definitely better than her brother. Her brother's top scorer in the Premier League. Yeah, I know. Same as you. <laughs> 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 Favourite player, Maggie? Um, probably Maggie Hall. Yeah, she's definitely up there. 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 Yeah. She's Louise, you heard it here first. Louise Carrigan, <laughs> best centre back in the league. And I could name all my teammates, but I'm not allowed, so. <laughs> but Louise is. Not that separate video. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. Soccer, yeah. yeah, my whole teammates. <laughs> um, my whole team. My whole team. Don't say Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> Derek. <laughs> Derek and Brian. <laughs> Favourite manager? Oh god, no, that's too hard. No, you gotta pick one right now. Oh god. Or you have to leave the room. It's <laughs> just gonna get up now. Oh god, I can't. I can't pick a favourite manager. <coughs> so many. Okay, you gotta pick one. Harry Kenny. Right, done. There we go. next week as well. Um, <laughs> favourite manager? Me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, Dutchy Keaton. Um, I think. A lot of people would say that, yeah. Yeah, uh, for me, he was a, not just the best manager, but coach everything he was just unbelievable for me he really improved me as a player and, and he's never the fan well you know the video <laughs> that's a keep for me uh, your first football memory then oh god um, <laughs> it's actually I used to live in Rosemount in the flats and I lived on the top floor and um, I remember I was only about six I was kicking the ball up and down and this woman knocked on my ma's door and just asked, oh yeah, does Derek play football? And she said, no, he kicks the ball up and down, he's only six. And uh, she was saying that the, the club, Rosemount FC, were getting an under-eight team together. Would I like to go down and play? And <clears throat> it was for the next day. So I went down and Mick, now David Keaton, uh, one of the Keatons, and Mick Dixon, um, were the managers and I just remember going in that first day first day uh, session and just absolutely loving football I loved football before well I thought I loved football but after that then it was just a bug and it yeah. just hasn't left me since my what's the question <laughs> your first memory of playing football oh god um, it can be as mundane as playing, playing up in there <clears throat> they used to have like uh, little five sides up in the hockey club up in, at Marley. Oh, no, no, he's playing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'd have like, we'd have bring about 10, 10 kids up and all on different days. Like, yeah. But like, I was very young playing up there, like, and then just killing all the boys basically <laughs> up there. <laughs> um, I don't know, like, yeah, probably playing with my brother and sister on the road, like, they're always yeah. having. Even though they wouldn't play with me, they would never be picked on anyone to see him, but... Yeah, been a referee. <laughs> Sounding goal. Yeah. And then, um, finally, we got one player you'd love to play alongside. <laughs> Doesn't have to be anyone in the room. Yeah. 
Het was een haafse wedere KMB. Eh. Zo, Stephanie Roach, probably. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Hi. Um, probably Kate McGabe. Yeah. Playing Hawthorne. Does this player have to be playing now? No. No. Roy Kane. Yeah. What a man. Probably in the side in Santa Mita. Sorry, Flyer, sorry, Flyer, being on Sunday. You do a good job with Kane now and then. Just the passes. It's the right of midfield. The balls will just be on the ground. Exactly. Well, anyway, thank you very much for coming in. And um, hopefully we'll talk to you all again soon. Best look at your leagues and stuff for the rest of the season. Yeah, and uh, if anyone else wants to come in and be guests on our brand new lovely couch, yeah. get in touch. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.